Hey guys, uh, this is Steve from Dora. Uh, happy to host the last uh, demo session for Finance Lab Incubation Program Season 3 at Dora Hacks. Happy to host uh, another three ama amazing projects, the final three out of the nine ROEs of the Binance Lab Incubation Program. Uh, all of them Binance Lab portfolios and Binance Lab Incubation Program participants. Uh, definitely why Binance puts so much resource and focus in those projects is something worth your attention and research into. So happy to have the chance to host uh, three brilliant founders today, uh, Calvin from Skyarc, Yonghui from Ming Club, and uh, uh, we also have Block, a Scissor team uh, joining us. So yeah, uh, each of the team will have 20 minutes to introduce yourself, your product to the audience. And uh, this is also part of the quadratic funding grant happening on HackerLink platform. So if you really like what they're building, uh, do go to HackerLink and support them, show your love, donate. Uh, we're, we're, we're all early stage projects. We need your attention. We need your help. We need your support. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll start with Skyarc. Um, uh, yeah, Dan, uh, Dan, Dan just popped in. Hi, Dan. Hi there. Nice, nice, yeah, nice I, to see you guys. Sorry, we're, we're a little bit late. Um, yeah. Matt will be dropping in very soon. Yeah, don't worry about it. Welcome to the party. So each yeah. of the team will have 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, we'll go with Skyarc, Ming Club, Block Hip Caesars. You got 40 minutes to prep. Don't worry about it. And we're good to go. Calvin, yeah. the stage is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. So, hi, everyone. This is Calvin from Skyarc Studio. So, Skyarc Studio is Singapore's first triple A blockchain game studio. And uh, we are very lucky to be selected by Binance to be in Binance Incubator Season 3. And today is our first public presentation so uh, i definitely want to share with you guys exciting things what sky has been up to lately so basically sky has been a kind of like a stealth project in the market um when we first went to binance because we were we came from a very famous traditional mobile game studio so they believe in the vision that we wanted to create for blockchain game right so we actually wanted to shape the narrative of what blockchain gaming is about gamify should be play and earn and we want the future of NFT games of tomorrow needs to be fun. And that's the fundamental of everything that we do, right? So we came out with a game under the Skyarc Studio. Our first namesake game is actually a three-part trilogy series of Skyarc Chronicles. So what is Skyarc Chronicles about? Since today we are sharing with a very uh, unique community from, from uh, Dora Hex, right? Which is about builders and, and everything is about. So I want to do something a bit special that is a bit different from other presentation. We're going to go behind the scene and take a look at how actually we come up with the conceptualization of what we're doing. So we are doing a anime adaptation of cryptocurrency. So it is a fantasy verse JRPG genre of blockchain itself. So these are all 100% original in-game studio. Uh, we did all this design by ourselves. This is all behind the scene. Well, I think everyone is always trying to know what on earth are Game 5 Studio doing behind the scene, right? So we're going to show you a bit more behind the scene. So in fact, the ideas that came to us is because when we do so much behind the scenes, as you can see, whether it's 2D, 3D, in fact, the number of days to create that we required to produce is crazy. It's like 20 months to create a particular character. But of course, if you have more artists, you have more as more studio, you have a bigger studio, you can churn it a lot faster. So we came up with an idea because nobody knows what Satoshi looks like in the world, right? So let's create an anime version of Satoshi. This was one of our first idea, first concept that we came up, right? And what is the narrative of Skyarc itself? Skyarc is about a arc and also a sky island, meaning when you are a gamer in our game, we, in our trilogy game, in fact, you are a ruler of the island, and all these islands actually linked together by also known as blockchain. So basically, we are creating a fantasy verse of cryptocurrency, right? So this is our addition of the King Satoshi before he became God and created the Sky Island. So we are actually doing a trilogy, like I mentioned. The first two games are actually mobile games, but totally different gameplay. So basically, you only require a single nft the biggest difference about our games and many games in the market is that you only require a single nft to play multiple games so it's actually a lot of game balancing needs to be done there's only going to be a single native token that means a single axs coin a single slp coin 
and we are doing a, a lot of cross game quests. So meaning you have to go to the first game to complete a certain quest. You have to go to game two to collect a certain material. But what we are trying to present to the, to the market is that we have a NFT game engine, the Sky Art engine behind it is able to allow NFTs to be interoperable between multiple game titles. So how do we do it? So we have three titles, like I mentioned. The first one is House of Heroes. The second one is Legends of Rise that talks about how Satoshi became the god itself. And then the third one is a Mirrorverse. So in case anyone feels that we are sexist on anything, in Mirrorverse, everything is flipped. Just like Satoshi, that is a male king, will become a female god. So that is the very exciting thing that we are doing. I'll share more a bit about Mirrorverse. It's actually a metaversal that we are building that will rival Sandbox itself, right? So basically, I, I, I'm going to jump over all these final details because uh, time is not really uh, on our side today. So basically, the narrative is about the prequel, the original, the current storyline, and then also the metaversal world that we are talking about of Sky Island, right? So the thing about our studio is everything is done in-house. Everything is original, original IP. Why are we doing this? Because we are actually gunning to become a mainstream media. No one knows in the Web2 natives knows about cryptocurrency, but they want to know more. And what is the best way for Web2 natives to know more about cryptocurrency itself? Why not build an anime about it, right? So we're going to do that. So these are the, some of the gameplays that we have. We're going to build two games. The first game being a portrait version where you are played in, in a portrait vertical mode on your phone. And the second is played in a horizontal landscape mode. Totally different gameplay, but you only require a single NFT to play both games, right? So basically, these are all the in-game things that I will jump a bit faster. So every we are building a very fair and honest game that we want users to enjoy, to play and have fun, and then also earn money at the same time. So how do we do this, right? So this is one of the characters that we created. We are actually have about five tier class during our first NFT release. So we actually have multiple tiering system that you can upgrade. But for example, you got a thief that we saw earlier. There is a male and female version. And we understand we did a lot of research in the market. We know that the average age that is in crypto right now is about 35, right? And we check a lot of them are otakus as well, or big fans of JRPG just like myself, right? So we are all very familiar with titles during our generation. We are familiar with Naruto. We are familiar with One Piece. So we actually put in elements that actually include the passive traits like Naruto. We are talking about Bloodline. We are talking about Sharingan eyes that you actually get to mint out. So meaning right here, if you see this brown eyes that you have, if you mint out another male with a red eye, another eye, and then you move on to the next tier where you might get a rope or a Kensei, there's a chance that you can mint out a dual eye passive traits. That means in-game, higher chance for a critical attack, higher chance for a dodge, that kind of thing. We actually want to decentralize. We don't want a studio, unlike any studio out there, whereby we can create an imbalanced hero and we sell it as an NFT and we sell it as a 10,000 NFT. No, we don't want to do that. All our box, our loot box, is going to be a single flat rate, right? And then we're going to leave the users, the marketplace, we're going to give you guys the power to win that next ultra rare NFT. And I, it's up to you guys to pair it because there's bloodline, there's different races, there's different passive traits that you can get. You guys can mix and match for the market. So activities that we have in the game, PPE, PVP, developing and building. So we have, like I mentioned, the biggest difference between our game and a lot of games in the market, we are not doing the usual wearables like weapons, equipment, and stuff like that. But we will do those as well, sorry. But we are adding things like voiceovers, eye color, skin color, race, blood type, and voiceover. What do we mean by voiceover? We are actually getting top-notch anime voiceover from voice artists from Demon Slayer, Attack of the Titan. So meaning if you manage, you're so lucky to get this voiceover from a rare anime studio. When you play the game, it's different from your friend that's playing the game. And you can actually pass down as you continue to e evolve to the next tier. So we have two coins in the market. We have Sky Art coin under the SAR token. And we also have Relic Energy Ore, which is a equivalent of the SLP. So three titles will share both of this token. So we're going to be doing actively doing a lot of game balancing, act, adding more tier classes to make the game more fun and more interactive. So these are some of the first look of the games. So like I mentioned earlier, we are doing a hero fusion. So the first class right now, so we are actually still a work in progress, right? Just to put it out there, a lot of the artwork, a lot of the animation are still in progress. In fact, 
just to bounce off, I think today is a fantastic day. Just, just 10 minutes ago, I just received the first preview of our music video. And I'm just going to do it because uh, I feel we want to give a sneak preview, a special sneak preview for everyone that's following us today. We're going to jump right to the MV that we have. Yeah. Sorry, I, I know everyone wants to continue to listen to this, but like I mentioned, this is a first edit and this is a impromptu review of the music video that we have. So what differentiates us from the rest? Like I mentioned right from the beginning, we are doing a cryptocurrency fantasy verse, an animated adaptation. So we are really going all the way, even up to the music. We actually work, so this is the equipment part. We actually work with top-notch studio like Sony Music. We get a original lyrics. Everything that you saw earlier is 100% original Sky Art IP. So that's the level that we're doing that we feel the market in the blockchain game file right now is lacking. We are going to bring that JRPG genre. We are really gunning to be maybe even the next Netflix animation, right? So we have other elements in, the, in, in everything as well. We actually incorporate One Piece as well. We have a Nakama Alliance in the form of a guild airship. We will also be implementing a Skyland because in our third title, Mirrorverse, we are actually building towards a sandbox but not in a pixelated form, but in a 3D animated form. And we are adding a lot of international brand IPs into this world that we are creating, right? So like I mentioned, we are gunning to be anime, we are gunning to be one-shot manga, we are gunning to be music, we are gunning to be games, we are gunning to be merchandise as well. So our base narrative, in fact, is about Satoshi King himself. Satoshi God, Satoshi King, we are working with XM Studio. If you Google XM Studio, they are the best studio in the world that builds DC comic, Marvel comics figurines. We're going to launch Satoshi figurines with them. So I think everyone wants to own a Satoshi figurine. And we're going to do that. We're going to do merchandise. We're going to do collaboration with big IPs from Japan. We're going to do one-shot manga. And like I mentioned earlier, even the soundtrack, everything is 100% authentic. We are going the JRPG genre all the way, right? So we work with top-notch composers with very established record. We are going to add voiceovers into... One, as one of the wearables, in fact, that can inherit and pass down. That's what we are doing in this genre. So customization, we will be launching 8-bit games as well. We are doing fashion loot. We are doing lens that I mentioned earlier. We are doing unique avatar NFT that is in-game itself. So there's a social element, messaging element in the game itself. There's a guild chat, there's alliance chat, and there's a separate friend list chat as well, right? So we are not just going to launch Sky Art Chronicles series games itself. We have been in discussion with several big name IPs like Star Wars, The Seven Princess, Combat Version. In fact, we are doing the source code. We are doing the game itself. So Sky Art itself is actually gunning to be a studio that will aim to rival and emulate the success of Animoca himself. And how do we do that? We are going to come up with multiple titles. Our first series, actually, we are launching on the BSC network because Binance believes in us. And we strongly believe in the Binance Network as well, right? So we're going to build a only assets on chain game with our first title, House of Heroes. And then we're going to have our second title six months right after the set share a common token. It's going to be fully on chain. That means your NFT is able to interact directly on chain. And then you have the game one that is only assets on chain. It's totally a totally different kind of gaming concept, both from the system and the gameplay. 
But what are we trying to convey? It's actually that we have a strong SkyArk engine, NFT game engine that allows NFTs to be interoperable between different games. And eventually, all these NFTs will enter our metaverse open world, which is Mirrorverse that we are creating, which is a 3D open world built on Unreal Engine game. And it will allow, it's like a sandbox imagine, but it's a 3D world and it is a cryptocurrency fantasy verse. So everything makes sense in a way. And we're going to continue, Skype Studio is going to, to incubate projects, going to launch other international brand IPs as well on different networks because we have a single vision. Number one, of course, we want to convey and become a mainstream media with the Skype series. And number two, we our vision of GameFi NFTs in the future should be interoperable, editable, evolvable across different game titles and also even across different networks, different layer ones. And eventually, all the NFTs can converge on our one metaverse. We believe in consolidating and creating a single metaverse, just like how Sandbox has achieved its great success, right? So basically, yeah, that is a sky up. Um, hopefully, you guys are keen to join us and uh, be part of our project. We are one of three projects in this season that has yet to launch token, that has yet to launch NFT sale. We will be doing our private sale round soon and we'll be planning our TGE. So come follow us on our Telegram, follow us on our Twitter, and we'll be sharing more updates. In fact, on demo day itself, there will be more releases. And of course, we will release the full version of the music videos that you guys just saw earlier and then for you guys to enjoy, right? Thank you so much. Let me stop the sharing. Cool, cool, Calvin. Uh, great presentation. I actually like. We can see the games. The games are uh, super, super carefully produced, uh, and a lot of details been adding to it. So, so what are the uh, the next big plans for you? Like in the past, in the next three months for Skyarc, uh, for 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 the companies that you're running. Right. So for Sky, for example, right, um, we are very focused on building the Sky Chronicles series. We are going to continue to build strategic partnerships. We have already formed strategic partnership with guilds. A lot of big brands, guilds have already committed that they, they share the same vision that what we have here, which is a game that has a legacy impact, that also has a mainstream appeal. And that's what we are trying to do right now. And um, definitely, we're going to focus on our private sale round with the tier one VCs. And then we're going to focus on our TGE. And uh, we're not going to let Binance down for their faith that they have put in us. We're going to create a absolute game changer kind of game five, right? There's a lot of game balancing that needs to be done behind the scene, balancing the token valuation between both. But we're going to be, we are quite sure that we are confident on achieving that. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Cool. Cool. So, um, so, so yeah, uh, 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 like, like one tiny question for you. So, uh, we know that the uh, GameFi itself uh, uh, like exploded in 2021, and a lot of guilds uh, are, are really thriving out of that. Uh, recently, the market has been uh, down a tiny bit, but uh, how do you see GameFi in 2022? Uh, what are what are some of the key uh, trends uh, going on that is different from 2021? How will the uh, ga GameFi sector evolve? Right. So with all the, I think we see on the news every day with Tencent, Ubisoft, Square Enix, many big studios have already announced that they are coming to this Web3 space, right? So Gamify is definitely going to elevate to the next level whereby games are well balanced. And then the esports part is definitely going to come into play. And we are also positioning ourselves with several games that allows PvP, collaboration, co-op PvP, esports elements, I think that is the right position that GameFi should go towards. In fact, if you look at, look at the traditional esports scene, games like Dota, LOL, they have been around for 10 over years, right? And they are still around because of the esports element. And we want to build games that have the game balances. And like I, the very first slide that we have, the vision that we have for GameFi should be play and earn rather than play to earn. It should be fun at the fundamental. And then the earning part is something like a bonus that comes along with it. Got it, got it. Yeah, I, I guess 2021 is mostly about play to earn. Right. Uh, mostly about earning. Uh, it's actually uh, DeFi, uh, like hide it in a, in a game game project. But I guess the, the, the true value of every game is about, uh, is fun. Uh, pretty much like you said. Uh, yeah. Be fun. Uh, it should be playable. It should uh, encourage people to come and 
play. Uh, this is why they should like participate in those games instead of like just earning money. Right. Uh, so, so yeah, I totally agree with you on this. So guys, uh, if you like what Kelvin and Skyark team presented today, uh, I recommend you to try out their beta version, their 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 protocols, uh, their their games, prototypes uh, that's about to be launched soon. Uh, uh, and join their community. Stay tuned for their most recent updates. Uh, if you really are a better into GameFi and uh, one of the very first uh, GameFi projects originated from Singapore, I guess you can go to HackerLink.io to show your love and support. Uh, you can vote uh, for Skyark team there. Uh, yeah, thank you for joining us today, Kelvin. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I guess uh, GameFi is definitely important, but uh, what's cooler than uh, maintaining a token? Uh, so 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 yeah, we have Yonghui and his team uh, introducing Main Club, uh, actually a very unique project uh, in this batch of Binance Lab Incubation Program. Hi, Yonghui. Hello. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Um, hi. Oh, um, Main Club. Yeah. Here we go. Twenty minutes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Um, Hi, my name is Yonghui, uh, co-founder and designer of Mint Club. Um, yeah, as Steve mentioned, that yeah, GameFi uh, is really, really interesting, a big topic, uh, that's for sure. And uh, we also believe that the social fi is also really, really big and interesting uh, topics coming. And Mint Club is all about the social fi and social tokens. And I'm gonna uh, introduce about uh, what our project is about and what we aim for and how our whole entire Mint Club ecosystem is forming and what we are heading toward uh, to build something very interesting. And uh, before I begin my presentation, I want to apologize in advance that uh, I may uh, cough a little bit during my presentation because I got recently COVID confirmed uh, and I still have some symptoms. So if I cough, please understand. OK, so uh, let me share my screen. So Mint Club uh, has started quite a small uh, kind of vision uh, in the beginning. Uh, first of all, we really wanted to build some place where anyone uh, in the planet can uh, launch their token without any coding and any liquidity uh, creations. We just really wanted to create something uh, like anybody who has some idea or a community or product, whatever, to tokenize. Uh, should not have any uh, complication to launch their token to make them tradable. So this was whole idea about Mint Club and launched on July 13, 2012, 21. And as you can see, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm purposefully not turning on the slide mode because sometimes when I do the slide mode, uh, it doesn't show up the screen share. So please understand about that. Um, uh, first of all, the, the, the Mint Club team actually have been this in the, uh, this blockchain industry for a long time, like uh, about four to five years. Uh, we've been uh, from uh, Team Blockchain uh, for our journey, actually. Uh, at the time, Team Blockchain was kind of only social by, I mean, even at the time, there's even no word, no terminology to say social by. Uh, uh, and and then, uh, our passion was always to create something social aspect on blockchain. And as you can see, uh, social file industry is still a very small, uh, small market niche on the blockchain. Uh, when you think about some leading uh, platforms in the market, you, can't, you cannot think much of that, like just Steam, uh, High, Big Cloud. Big Cloud became uh, quite successful nowadays. Uh, but still, there's no any single player uh, leading entire this industry yet. Uh, but when you think about NFT, um, uh, yeah, like CryptoKitty uh, kind of boomed four years ago, three years, three to four years ago, and uh, but still the market size at the time was not that big. And then entire four years, uh, NFT was very very niche market. But but think about it, just within one year, NFT people start to realize the poten potential of the NFT uh, system and uh, the the market. And the market size is like 180 times bigger uh, than the previous year. So 
this is the kind of the more, most exciting part. Uh, think about the social aspect of blockchain. Nobody can even imagine how uh, how those kind of social aspects will be uh, adapted in the blockchain system. Uh, this can be that very different. It's not going to be like something that we want to make uh, another Facebook blockchain. We don't. This is not about something another Twitter on blockchain. This is going to be something completely different because this is a Web3 uh, area. So this is what we see the vision. Uh, we want to make some place uh, where a person who has some idea, a community uh, or product, uh, even just a simple application or website uh, that want to be tokenized, uh, can make just token and then uh, uh, present to people to utilize right away. Uh, when you want to do that, actually there are not many options for you to think of. Uh, let's say you create ABC token Ethereum right now. Let's say you created 100 ABC tokens. Uh, what can you do to make them tradable? Um, I mean, issuing the token may be easier nowadays because there are a lot of uh, no coding uh, token issuance uh, tools. But the creativity is more more important thing actually to make them tradable. And to do that, you may need about uh, more than $100,000 uh, amount of liquidity to make them uh, tradable enough level, uh, which is very, uh, very high better for most of the, uh, the market entry players. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, I'm going to show the entire Mint Club website very quickly later on. Uh, I'll just uh, uh, briefly point of uh, what is really good point about the Mint Club website. So first of all, in the Mint Dark Club website, uh, you can just uh, simply uh, input few information there and then click the register, then boom, you have uh, your token right away. And uh, the token becomes instantly tradable. You don't need to do any liquidity creations. Like to say, you create ABC token in club and then tell your friend, hey, I made a token. And to talk to the person, your friend can just purchase token right away, uh, even though you didn't create any liquidity for, for, uh, 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 creations. And the most exciting part is that you will have your own uh, kind of token link, like mint.club slash ABC. And even there's a widget uh, link uh, feature. Uh, you can just share with your widget link with other people or even your website. Then the person does not need to visit bin.club to, uh, to purchase your token. Uh, they can do in the widget link directly. So within a uh, half year, uh, we actually made quite a meaningful numbers uh, with amazing community behind it. So already 2,700 uh, social tokens are created in the Mint Club. And uh, we have over 130,000 uh, users right now. Uh, and uh, most importantly, we, we, we experienced quite a lot, uh, quite a few of uh, very difficult moments uh, uh, from uh, external uh, platforms. But uh, we and our community uh, overcame together. And so the, the biggest powerful moment, uh, powerful aspect of our Mint Club is that we do have very strong community supporters. So I really want to show uh, the Mint Club website. So I'll just skip this part. This is all about the price bonding curve mechanism, but I will just show uh, uh, during the website demo. So this is Mint, Mint Club website. Uh, so first of all, I'm a designer, uh, and I'm not that smart person, <laughs> honestly. Uh, so most, most product that I design is try to make something that I, myself, can understand. So uh, I can guarantee that a Mint Club website is super, super easy to use. So when you go to a website, you can first of all see all kind of uh, social to, uh, tokens created right now on the Mint Club. And these tokens are uh, uh, same BAP chain tokens. So each token has the BAP chain uh, uh, token contract, of course. Uh, and then you can uh, buy and uh, you can sell uh, freely in, uh, in the website. Uh, so you can see that uh, you can see that this token has this unique uh, URL like Vince.club slash the monkey. Uh, so yeah, it's really easy to look around the entire the token features and uh, the, we have the referral system. Uh, sort of like that. 
Uh, in the demo, actually, I want to create a token to show that how much, uh, how easy to create a token. I sometimes uh, say myself that the, uh, even uh, even uh, the, the my next door grandma uh, can create a uh, token in Mint Club. I mean, obviously, I have joking, but yeah, this is how uh, I want to say it's easy to do that. So when you go to create, and then you just uh, uh, write down the token name. Uh, maybe I can say uh, chat with Project Seven. Project Seven is actually my uh, Telegram out name, and let's say Project Seven token. Uh, you can uh, decide uh, max minting supply from zero to one hundred million. Uh, this is obviously just for demo. Uh, I'm gonna just create seven uh, project seven tokens, uh, and then it it will show how the uh, the uh, bonding curve will work for your token and register. And if you confirm, then one, two, three seconds. I mean, based on the blockchain uh, BSC chain network situation. Uh, it's a little bit slower than I thought today. Yeah, now uh, my project seven token is just created on chain. And now what you can do is that, uh, what I can do is I can just create some logo. Let me, yeah. So I decide my uh, project seven logo. You can type your website or or, or not. Uh, maybe I'll just, uh, I have my Twitter account, so there are not many followers. So, so feel free to follow. <laughs> uh, I can put my Twitter and then say, uh, let's say, yeah, you can use one Project 7 token to chat with uh, me uh, for 10 minutes. And you can send this token, this address, then you can have you can have DM with for me 10 minutes. I'm, I'm not sure if uh, even people Want to, want to use this one, but this is just for demo, right? And publish. Sorry, somebody used mine. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll just type this uh, in a just meet prop site because um, this is just demo token. Sorry. Okay, you know, whenever uh, you do the project demo, even though you check millions and millions of times this is your product, uh, there's always some error uh, whenever you actually on, on stage. But uh, please understand uh, that there's some a, a little technical problem. But uh, really, when you create uh, uh, when, you, when you create uh, 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 some some information like that, and then you can get uh, mint.club and your token. Your token symbol that you will get your token website. Uh, right now, there's no logo up here because I uh, I'm kind of have some technical difficulties to to unload my logo. But your token is already registered here like that, and anyone can buy uh, this project seven token and sell this project token project tokens uh, right away in Mint Club website. So uh, I just wanted to show how much easy to create uh, the Bat Chain token uh, in a with a very simple few clicks uh, right away. Um, so let me get back to uh, the slide. So, uh, so far, uh, Mint Club's main strategy was like, uh, we wanted to, first of all, make very stable, uh, uh, concrete uh, uh, platform uh, where anyone can issue the tokens uh, and also run the tokens uh, smoothly. So this is what we really aim for so far. And, and right now we're in the stage that we actually scale up this uh, entire ecosystem. So we have uh, three different uh, stratifiers to increase this ecosystem with communities together. So first of all, as you can see, there are over 2,700 smart tokens already created. And maybe some of them are not uh, active, but many of them actually have very, very active its own communities and own users. So with uh, combining together, uh, the community can grow faster with, with network effects together. Uh, so this is kind of one uh, important villa. So 
uh, actually there's a, a one use case for this uh, this pillar so this person uh, called uh, Korini uh, Kindergarten and is a very famous Korean YouTuber. Uh, he created a token called Rini token in Mint Club uh, to use uh, their, uh, his uh, uh, kind of um, big uh, followers and their uh, 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 some uh, crypto communities that he runs. Uh, so this is kind of a good example of the community uh, aspects of the, uh, of the uh, uh, border market strategies. If we can have more uh, single token project that linked with quite big communities, uh, then their community becomes Mint Club families and, Mint, and on top of Mint Club ecosystem, the Mint Club ecosystem will grow faster. So this is kind of important, uh, one of the uh, our go-to market strategies to nurture more those kind of single token uh, community token projects. Uh, another one is that the we uh, have also unique uh, referral, to, uh, referral system. So. Uh, I showed my refer uh, page like that, right? So anyone can uh, have this refer link and then share this link with other people. Then uh, whenever sell the uh, whenever someone sell the token uh, on buy the token on the Mint Club, they get one one point three percent trading fee and one zero point three percent of buying our uh, tax. Uh, whenever they make a transaction and those entire transaction uh, fee will go to someone who shared this uh, uh, referral link. Uh, we believe that this can be a very uh, strong tool uh, to uh, quickly uh, enhance uh, this market exposure. The third one is also very important strategy for us. As you can see, Mint Club is itself is an open protocol. Like anyone actually can create a website like mint.club uh, so uh, our team's main strategy is that to create more uh, external projects uh, directly utilizing uh, mint club protocol so the best example for this strategy pillar is uh, one stop market so this one stop market is uh, uh, made and run by uh, uh, a company that are uh, partnering with us so we have them to uh, launch this project together um, and the one the market is all about like time token uh, marketplace uh, on Binance Smart Chain so if you uh, are following some of your influencer and then you want to launch the person's time token uh, anyone can just come here and then initiate the time token of the person and people can trade the time tokens to see how much the person's uh, time values uh, is so for example, uh, somebody created already a uh, CZ tokens and people are uh, trading it. Uh, so right now, uh, CZ's one second value is $1.6. Um, I, I, I still believe that this is supposed to be far more than this because uh, CZ is definitely one of the most uh, expensive person on the planet. Uh, but as you can see, these individual uh, time tokens are actually smart tokens uh, uh, generated by uh, Mint Club protocol. And whenever people trade uh, those time tokens, uh, those mint uh, tokens as a collateral contract and the bonding curve system uh, will be enlarged more because that's also using mint club protocol. So this is very important strategy for us to nurture more pro projects uh, like that. And uh, even uh, yeah, even if we uh, we really actively look for those uh, companies or dev teams to develop more uh, products on top of Mint Club project product uh, sorry ecosystem, <coughs> we also actively as a team uh, launch new project on top of uh, Mint Club ecosystem so that um, we can diversify uh, the product uh, product roadmaps on the, on the ecosystem. Uh, one of that trials, actually, we are uh, planning to launch a very, very unique NFT uh, project on top of uh, uh, on top of the uh, uh, Mint Club ecosystem called Pixel Club. Uh, I'm gonna show a little sneak peek about that. Uh, this will be launched actually um, uh, in uh, January 20th, uh, so approximately in seven to eight days. Uh, so this is not uh, shown at all on public. You, know, you guys are first to see this. 
Uh, so in Dixel Club is the digital uh, collectible uh, uh, pixel art club, uh, like, you know, like a, a board a, a yacht club or crypto funds, so those kind of uh, digital collectibles, right? Uh, but rather than just randomly generated a, a couple of thousand uh, uh, editions, in Dixel Club, people can create each editions uh, by the users. Uh, so you can generate the next uh, edition by overriding its pixels uh, for your own NFT. So this is quite unique concept. And uh, whenever someone uh, generate the next edition of the pixel art NFT, uh, its pixel price is increasing zero, uh, increasing five percent. Uh, so the minting cost uh, of the next edition, next edition, next edition, next edition will be keep increasing. Uh, uh, based on the how many uh, pixels uh, are overwritten. Uh, and whenever someone generate uh, the next edition and pay the Dixel, uh, Dixel tokens to overwrite, 90% uh, of them will be stored in the refundable contract. And when someone, some person who owns this NFT uh, can burn the NFT to uh, get the refund of the 90% of the tokens. And 10% will go to the other Pixel overwritten contributors. Uh, more uh, details will be announced soon, and we really believe that this will be kind of game changer in in, in, in a digital collectible uh, market on minus smart chain. So, yeah, this is it. Uh, Mint Club is what we all want to do is that we just want to create a token building platform where anyone with just an idea can create a token economy without any complications thank you so much uh, uh, for your time and please join on our community uh, uh, and join this uh, new journey with us thank you yeah, yeah. thank you yonkui for for the sharing uh i guess uh some of yonkui's uh, products are already ready so if you go to Ming club uh, website you can try out their products and uh, as you see there if you refer some friends uh, to Mint Token, you can get a referral bonus, uh, which is great. So uh, I do have a bunch of questions for you, but we're running out of time today. Uh, so let me just quickly oh, ask one. So, uh, who do you think are the main audience uh, for your platform? Uh, why do you build this platform? Who do you build this platform for? So as you can see, uh, our main target is actually more the outside of the, uh, the, the like, uh, let's say we are kind of, we used to be an inner circles of blockchain uh, industry, right? So person who kind of familiar with all the DeFi and uh, the big projects. Uh, but there are some people outside of the inner circles that the, uh, some community owners, individuals, uh, those kind of small players, micro uh, 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 economies, uh, or even far outside of that, like some, products or applications that they don't have any tokens, but kind of interesting in tokenization. Our main target, target is just like kind of bad directions. So we want to bring more uh, new entries to this market, uh, to this social market. Uh, we, that's why we need to lower the boundary for them to they enter to enter this market easily. Uh, and this is what we want to Sorry about that. I'm not calling you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. No problem. Got it, got it. Cool. Yeah, thank you for joining us today, Yonghui. Uh, Min Club thank is you. also very unique. Uh, it actually enables, uh, like, like Yonghui mentioned, people who are outside of Web3, outside of crypto right now, uh, to have an easy access into uh, tokenomics, uh, create your own token economy. Uh, is something that really helps uh, because I, I I know that there's a lot of you who are keen to know uh, how you can set the first step uh, into into crypto into Web three. Guess you can try out Mint Club's product first and uh, follow their Twitter, follow their uh, community channels. If you liked what Yunghui uh, mentioned today, uh, go to Hackling Dial to check out more about uh, Yunghui and his brilliant team and their products and show your support. Uh, donate. I, I guess we still have one or two weeks to go. Uh, thank you for joining us, Yunghui, and hope you will get, get well soon. Yep. Yeah, last but not least, 
we had GameFi, we had DeFi, I guess. Uh, now it's the party for NFTs. So, hey, folks, happy to have you guys here, Matt and Dan, uh, yeah. the game of the year. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to say thanks very much for uh, to Dora Hacks and Binance Labs for um, all the help that you guys have given us thus far. It's been an amazing journey. We've still got a couple of weeks left. Um, so, you know, you guys do an amazing job behind the scenes and I highly recommend anyone getting involved with Dora Hacks, um, which has the largest developer community um, in the world. So uh, by all means, you know, utilize those services. They're really, really quality, really good. Um, so I'm joined, um, thankfully, by um, Dan, who's our CTO, who's going to be taking the second half of our presentation. Um, did you have any questions for us before we kick off, Steve? Uh, we're good to go. Thank you for your kind words. you got 20 minutes. So, yeah. 20 minutes. We'll do our best. We've got a lot to show. So hopefully we can get through it all. Um, so I might yep, just be yep. about sharing my screen. And so hopefully you guys can all see that. Yeah, awesome. So the first cap off the rank, um, <clears throat> we have a new website coming um which kind of re-illustrates the, the new things that, that we're putting together um, based on a re refined, more compliant model. Um, so it's been a bit of a journey for us. Um, and we still have the ESOFs very much of uh, supporting um, other communities with other projects and what, what some people might call shit coins. We're going to call them um, much loved altcoins and, uh, so we're still very much driving towards this ethos of supporting those coins, supporting other NFT projects and building what we're terming, um, you know, a player owned economy. So the player owned economy is essentially what the metaverse should be driving towards. Um, and the real value of the metaverse is going to be compounding uh, network effect and creating these new layers for people to run different business models on. So if you think about where it's going ahead, which is probably answering a question that Steve's going to ask me later, um, it's all about what the guild activity is going to do. What are they going to build towards? So I think what we're going to have is something more kind of consistent with something called G Sports, um, which is like esports but for guilds. So you'll have all of these different guilds competing against each other and trying to be top rank on all the best metaverse type games. Um, so this is our um, this is our new uh, site that we're putting together. It's not quite finished. Um, but I'm just going to kick off with our teaser here, which gives you a bit of an idea about um, some of the cinematics and the quality um, and the fidelity we're putting together um, at the back. But obviously our games, at least for now, are going to be low polygon. So we'll kick it off. So yeah, that's a, a very small snippet of the, um, the cinematic that we're putting together. Uh, and the new website, it will be rolled out uh, expecting next week, which is a much more simplified version of the, um, the site that we've put together. Um, and it has our, our new roadmap, which we will go into um, very soon. Uh, but the other thing that I wanted to share um, just briefly was uh, also our community. So... Our community is really, really involved with us and what we're doing. Um, we have uh, 6,700 members in Telegram. And in terms of Discord, it's also quite active. We've got, um, last check, I think it was around about 9,000. Someone is going to correct me very soon, I'm sure. But um, we really value all of the, the comments, all the feedback from our community across what we're building towards. Um, and speaking of which, what we're actually trying to do uh, essentially is build um, a gaming multiverse, which is in part developed by us in-house um, through our highly experienced game development team that have worked on uh, AAA titles uh, all across different you know, genres and uh, platforms, as well as other um, game developer studios who will be building out different offerings for us and with us. So the whole concept is to build out this multitude of games and provide um, an NFT ecosystem that leverages those games and the earning component 
allows you to upgrade all of these different NFTs in different ways. So you have um, apes that can be used as character. You can level them up. You can breed them. Uh, you can also create uh, power-ups and you can make items. So there's various different ways that you can attack the ecosystem per se. And I think that's what makes us really quite different is that through these different tokens and mechanics that we have available, we can really adjust the meta. And we can use things like our games for NFTs that Dan will talk a little, about a little bit later um, to specifically target different portions of those NFT holders based on their attributes to promote community competitions, um, different reward structures, events, and all these different types of things that involve the community on a different level. So I think that's one of the things that's really unique about us. Um, we could also utilize other NFT ecosystems and bring them in and use those NFTs as boosts in our games um, to create entirely new different uh, mechanics and offerings. So um, if we have a quick look at our deck, um, we've prepared a few things. So <clears throat> I have just gone into our introduction, which is um, basically we're creating an open metaverse that leverages a gaming multiverse to integrate innovative NFTs to drive a diverse and dynamic player-owned economy. That's really, really clear. But what our mission is, is to become the number one gaming metaverse. Um, and we have uh, very strategic plays that are happening in the background through all of our various discussions with the greater network through Binance Labs, all the VCs, all the strategic partners that we're um, speaking with at the back and organizing uh, our future. So the future is bright. And in terms of who we are, um, we have quite a significant team already. Um, so this is our full-time team that's based on the founders um, across the top left here, uh, our design, development, and marketing team all in one. So um, just in terms of full-time, we, we have a few other people uh, on the full-time team, but this is just design, development, and marketing as it stands. Um, so wonderful groups of people. Um, very spirited, enthusiastic, great culture. Every one of them um, is supporting us on our journey and building towards what we're looking to develop and implement as a short, mid medium and long-term vision. I wouldn't be myself if I didn't mention our fantastic community management team, which um, there are, this is just our core community management team. We have... Um, we also have a lot of other people that um, you know pitch in here and there, just to just to you know sort of cover different areas as we progress. Um, we have a really big team full of amazing people, and um, these guys are where the rubber meets the road. And I always do my best to thank them because um, you know this is where the player feedback uh, really comes in, and um, these guys are where the rubber meets the road. So you know they're the first to tell us what's happening with with what's going on in the project. Um, and all of the different things that uh, you know we should be um, keeping track of and um, and looking at. So um, the other thing that I did have to show is based on our beta, we actually have been able to get some pretty good feedback through the surveys. Um, so I'm just going to look through this really really quickly. Um, we we've been able to define uh, essentially what has been working and what needs to be improved. And no product is perfect at a beta level, which is why you need player feedback. You really need to analyze what's going on. And through our network of people um, who can assist us on the data level, we've been able to do some uh, sentiment analysis on all of the topics. So if you're familiar with our project, um, in order to essentially um, uh, gain the reward structure from completing the surveys four and five, you needed to fill out quite significant feedback based on um, you know what you thought about the game, the game experience, um, and the Alvis and Wilds, the mechanics, uh, all those different things. And the feedback that we got actually was you know remarkably positive, um, even at that stage. In the game, essentially at the beta level, it, you know it's quite rudimentary. Um, we were able to get out, um, you know, pretty much just a basic sort of uh, solidified concept of the of the base version we wanted to roll with. Um, but this has been able to give us um, really valuable feedback in order to decide what our next direction 
is and has been. So uh, moving on to the next iteration of what we're actually going to be rolling out, we have two entirely different game modes um, that have been designed by myself and Dan and built with, um, you know, some of the other guys to, to assist the mechanics and stuff. And it is a significant leap uh, based on the existing beta as it is now. Um, so with that being said, I might actually pass it over to Dan. Um, oh, no, actually, sorry, I haven't shown the roadmap. Please excuse me. Where we are headed, this is the important part for you guys to understand because we have not revealed this in public just yet. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see what we're doing. <clears throat> so the revised roadmap, as seen for the first time by everybody, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'll stay on this page for a little while so you can get your little screenshots out. Uh, so what we've actually done is we've done our genesis. This is already complete. All of these things are um, finalized. Uh, in the construction phase, which is Q1, which is where we are, this is what we're currently building. Um, so we have a brand and info refresh, which is nearly finalized. Um, Dan can tell you exactly when the NFT launch pad is going to come out uh, in combination with the gamified banana farming, which applies directly to apes and leveling them up, which goes alongside our ape character, which is the Genesis Mint event. The marketplace is not far off as well. The guys at the back are really smashing that out, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and then we also have a full game release uh, with the NFT integration, the game rewards, and leaderboards. So this, this essentially comprises, um, you know, the first iteration of our full ecosystem coming together. Um, so we'll have several different game modes that are quite different uh, for our one versus one PvP. And then as we sort of progress through the different stages, um, there are a lot of different things that start to be added in, in terms of different types of NFTs. We have our Metaverse Adventures game release. Um, we have Tournament Mode Beta. Uh, we also have Power Ups in, in Q3, which I'm really excited about. Um, and then, of course, different games, game releases that incorporate into the Metaverse Adventures um, progressive. So there's a lot to come. Um, we, we're constantly looking at ways that we can, um, that we can get more out of what we're doing and, um, expand our team with more expertise and, uh, basically the sky's the limit, you know, in terms of what we're actually able to produce with the people that we have on board. Um, I was actually very privileged today to test out the new mechanics for, um, for the God mode that I created for, for the battle mode. Um, and it's a really fun and exciting game. Um, so I'm, I'm excited, genuinely, about our future um, with all that we can offer and um, the, the roadmap. I'm really happy with it. Dan's happy with it. Um, and all of the elements that we have coming together with our technical constraints and with our products layering in over the top, uh, I really think that we're laying the foundations for an amazing ecosystem with brand placement, with all of these different leveraged and compound network opportunities for uh, different projects to, to be involved and integrate with. So um, where we're heading is, uh, is an amazing direction and um, I can't wait to see what the future holds for, for the project, for our community and everyone who gets involved. So with that, I might just pass it over to Dan um, to take lead on the second half of this. And um, Dan, do you, I'll just stop sharing and but you can take the ball and run with it. Thanks, Matt. Cheers for that. Um, okay, so here I'll just do a quick dive into the tech. I notice we're, we're really running short on time, so I'll try to keep it quick. Um, so right here we have the token. Now, there's actually an article that was released um, a while back kind of discussing the, um, the utility around the token. But the important thing to note is that we're trying to really build out the BAS token and its utility in order to truly scale with the games that we create and with the kind of players we bring on. So there's a lot of utility. There's governance. Um, the, the token actually has a booster mechanic in game. So players who have a lot of BAS will be able to level up faster and level up their NFTs. Um, there's tribe staking to basically allow tribes to pull together their BAS and utilize that boost mechanic together. NFT minting and scrapping which is an important aspect where every time an NFT is created within the Bassverse, um, Bass goes and acts as collateral behind it. 
and then over time once you're done playing with it or the item is out of meta you can actually scrap it and get your bass back and then the secondary services like the nft launchpad that matt mentioned um so right now we have the game source out this is our kind of premium pass to the block it scissors ecosystem uh this means that it allows you to play the better rewards program which is what i am quickly going to demo right here so if you have a game sir, you can come over to gamesters.blockitzers.com and you can pop in your wallet address here with your game sir and quickly deposit. Uh, first, we have to approve the smart contract. So right now, as our community knows, the beta rewards program is paused due to some, to some issues we had, especially with botting. However, um, this, this, this program is essentially going to be how we get the feedback, which Matt showed earlier. And as we release more games, we're going to keep doing them. Uh, we're going to refine the formula a little bit, but the idea is that gamesters will be able to keep playing these betas. They'll be able to keep offering us feedback, which we'll then use to improve games. And they'll be. this is how we're going to release out Bass over time. So here, as you can see, I've deposited this champion. Um, and now I can go here where I can come to better.blockitscissors.com, which is our game, and I connect my wallet, and authenticate, and here we go. When I click play, um, I won't jump into a game right now, but as you can see, our NFT pops up, and it actually also pops up in game. Um, so right now, we just have the battle mode, and uh, that's that. Let's just jump back here. So what's special about these games here as well? A big element to developing on blockchain really is it's evolving so fast that we have to be very agile. But at the same time, everything you develop and put out in terms of smart contracts is immutable. So we spent a lot of time studying the foundations of the digital assets we made, the gamesters, and we'll be doing that with all the digital assets we, we put out. And essentially, we've encoded the metadata in the smart contracts, and then we've used Chainlink VRF to randomize that metadata. This is very powerful, as, as Matt mentioned. It allows us to build other smart contracts that target these different traits. We haven't yet put this into use. However, the point is that we can, and we're not limited by um, you know, digital assets that we may have put out before. For example, we can basically build a lottery, and you stake your gamester, and then basically when it randomizes, it gives, um, it gives rewards to everyone with maybe a cigarette attribute or maybe a Bitcoin earring. This is just these are just some examples. Um, the player ecosystem. So there's going to be NFTs, there's going to be tokens, and then there's leaderboards. Um, let's focus on NFTs. Apes, items, power-ups, and land. These are concepts which are pretty normal uh, across uh, video games all over the place. However, we're just going to make them NFTs, and they're going to be player-owned. So they're going to sit in your wallet, and they're all going to be augmentable, meaning that we're going to use these dynamic uh, this dynamic way to encode metadata into smart contracts and therefore you know you can level them up over time by using our tokens so this is where we have five tokens um, that you can essentially win whilst playing and then use on the different nfts in order to level them up or to mint new things and then leaderboards really in order to create a good game we need to have a very competitive atmosphere and we need to have a meta which constantly evolves uh, bringing demand and supply for, for different uh, items in the economy, really. Um, the Block It Scissors game. So this is our first game, and it's 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 Matt's idea, which is brilliant in my opinion, uh, which is just taking a simple, universally understood concept like rock, paper, scissors, and creating a game around it. So really, it's brilliant because it allows us to attract a very big audience all around the world, and no matter whether you're, you know, very high social class, low social class, everyone can play rock, paper, scissors. And this is where, you know, we have to invent mechanics and we've taken a lot of the feedback from the beta to kind of improve. And here you can see some of the work we're doing on, on newer concept art that we have. Um, Metaverse Adventures, this is something that we've had in the works and ties into that altcoin utility that Matt was mentioning. Really, it's key for us to harvest other communities and bring more players into Bass. And the way we're going to do this with a very experienced game team is we're going to find communities. Uh, we're going to discuss games and utility models around how their token can interact with the game. Then we're going to quickly develop and prototype games for them. And then we're going to clearly um, 
put them out there. They're going to advertise this to their community, and we're going to onboard players into FAST through some specifics that will be released later on. Secondary services, um, really, with the amount of demand that's coming out for, for blockchain, uh, there's going to be a lot of studios and projects looking to get involved in crypto. And this is where it's key for us to essentially develop technology in-house and then outsource it. So, for example, through our NFT launchpad, we're going to be using our expertise developed around NFTs to allow other projects to develop, you know, very, very well thought out NFTs that can really, you know, not just be used now or for purely art purposes, but really be useful over time where they may be able to develop uh, more complex utility models around them. And with that, uh, over to thank you. I'll pass it over back to Matt. Uh, if he's still here. Um, okay. Um, we seem to not be able to get Matt on. But anyways, I'd just like to thank everyone. Um, and here there's a couple of links uh, for, for getting us here, really. Our community, the entire team. Um, it's just been a very, very long effort. Okay, Matt's back. Uh, maybe he has some last things to say. Okay. Looks mm. looks like we're waiting on Steve. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Here yep, we go. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Also, yeah. Uh, can you add Matt add up, back on it again? There we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're good to go. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Oh, great, great. great. Yeah, just just I just wanted to say one last thing is that uh, we we plan to do a hackathon through hackerlink.io, uh, which is, of course, Dora Hacks's um, legion of supporters uh, and developers that can help um, to bring about our very first version of the Metaverse wallet. So it's something that we're working towards. Um, we're just starting to draft all the ideas and... Um, I'm really, really excited about what we can sort of do with this. Um, there's a lot of really cool things we can do with the UX that uh, really focuses on what an NFT can do, what it's supposed to be doing, um, all of its available features, and and implementing something that is a lot more fluid uh, and really, really you know meaningful for the community. I think that's uh, really valuable. So, plus the the hot and cold wallet technology that we can. Um, uh, be lent from IBM, which will be really interesting to implement. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, I'm sure Steve will keep everyone involved uh, and informed, and so will we from our side. So. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess I don't have further questions for you, uh, but definitely I agree with what Matt uh, mentioned. Uh, I, I guess NFT is moving to a programmable stage uh, where programmable NFTs, uh, we're adding new features, new ways to engage with NFT holders, traders, the community, uh, I guess it's the biggest trend uh, in 2022. We've seen punks, we've seen uh, apes, and uh, uh, I guess uh, we, we can find more interesting uh, NFT projects like uh, BS uh, in 2022 to uh, achieve further su success. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I don't have further questions for you. Um, in the uh demo day i guess happening next next week uh we'll, we'll only have 10 minutes uh for the presentation so uh, i guess uh it will be great for you to present in five minutes uh, i mean the deck part and three minutes on the product part if that makes sense uh and yeah so happy to see like you guys all made such big progress in the past few weeks uh, I, I guess all of the judges, all of the VCs joining the demo day will be super surprised and amazed by your progresses. And I'm personally very proud. Uh, and uh, yeah, so so we had GameFi projects, uh, DeFi and NFT projects uh, joining today. Uh, I, I guess like uh, covering different sectors. I hope you guys all do great, not only for the demo day, but also for future. So, so guys, all the audience, if you really like what they're presenting today, I guess they are doing great on different sectors that cover um, like different areas of your interest. So do check them all, all out on HackerLink platform and show your love and support. You can donate, you can contribute to their success. They're still very early stage uh, projects compared with other projects you might run into in the space. 
to your support, your support matters. And uh, point their communities to stay tuned. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it for today. Uh, thank you all for joining. And I uh, hope to see you guys soon in the demo day. Have a demo day. Thank you. Thanks very much. And thanks very much to all the other the teams. That are yeah, on the yeah, program. Thank you. Uh, we're doing such a great job. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see everyone's success come together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a great night.